Hi guys, my name is Alex. I'm a first year dental student at the Medical University of Vienna and today I'm going to talk about five very common study mistakes that a lot of people make and I show you how to cope with them. The first thing is improper highlighting. Now what I mean by that? Highlighting is probably one of the most common or frequently used studying techniques because it's simply very easy to do and you don't have to think about a lot. And highlighting is very efficient, but only if you do it the right way. Here's what I do. The first thing I do is that I skim through the article, read the introductions and the conclusions and try to find out the main intentions of the author. So I grab a very prominent color such as bright yellow or pink and then I mark the main ideas or the main concept. Generally when I'm highlighting I try to be as minimalistic as possible because if I were to highlight a whole paragraph and mark every single word it gets increasingly difficult for our brain to process all these things and remember all of them because we think that everything must be important where it really isn't. So this is the first step. Then I try to go one level deeper. For example, I find some interesting or neat facts that aren't the main concept but are still worth mentioning. These are what I call second or third level ideas. And so what I do is that I grab a bit more of a subtle highlighter such as a soft blue or soft green. And I will then highlight them with a thin line. So I know that they are not the main concept but are still worth remembering in the back of our head. Now when it comes to highlighting, it also heavily depends on the type of subject you're studying for. For example, me in medicine, I don't have to read through these large amounts of texts or something, so this highlighting concept isn't that applicable for me. However, I believe that in other subjects, such as literature, or history or something, it can be more easily applied. The next thing that sort of goes hand in hand with the whole highlighting stuff is making notes. Generally, making notes is not a bad thing. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of making those huge amounts of summaries about a certain topic which you just never read through again and you just wasted your time. I believe that what we're actually doing here is that we trick our brain into thinking we are productive because making a summary is just so easily done. We just have to read through a text and basically paraphrase it and write it down. And we think that we are productive yet we don't get very far with this tactic. So my approach on this is somewhat different. Let's say I'm reading through a text and I stumble across some paragraphs that I find worth remembering. Let's say that I'm studying my anatomy book and I'm reading through a chapter of the upper thorax. And then I get to the page of the ribs where I stumble across the fact that the first seven pairs of the ribs are attached directly to the sternum, whereas the pairs 8 to 10 are only attached indirectly. And the ribs 11 and 12, they aren't attached at all. So what I do then is that I search for a blank spot on the page and I only write those key facts down there and nothing more. So every time that I get to revisit this page, the first thing that pops into my eye are my notes. Whereas if I were to have a separate notebook where I have all my summaries in it, I have to carry it all the time with me when I'm studying and I just probably will never look at it again. First of all, this tactic is extremely time saving, but also I believe that it just helps you remember the stuff way easier. Next point is the flashcard issue. Now, first of all, I'm a huge fan of studying with flashcards. I believe that it's one of the best ways to actually study something and to remember it over the long term. Yet, there are a lot of mistakes that people make when it comes to studying. About a year ago, when I was studying for a medicine entry exam, I believed that in order to pass it, I would need to make flashcards for every single topic. And then I ended up making over 2,000 flashcards and then barely using them. It wasn't until I realized that there were endless amounts of already created decks online that I could simply download and most of the times they were way better than I could have ever done them by myself. Now, when you're studying for a big exam, creating flashcards by yourself is a huge time consumer. Time which most of the times you simply don't have. And this falls into the same category as making these huge piles of summaries which you never look at ever again. We only trick our brain into thinking we are productive by creating all those flashcards or texts or whatever. Whereas in reality, we don't really remember most of the stuff we write down. They are basically flashcards or Anki's or Quizlet, whatever app you use, already out there to every single topic you could ever imagine. So please don't waste your time in creating them by yourself. I also know some people out there that still do them manually, so you create your flashcards on a piece of paper, which I believe has only downsides compared to the digital version. First of all, if you actually want to make flashcards by yourself and you write them all with your hand, this is just way more exhausting and also time consuming than doing it digital. Furthermore, you don't get to enjoy all the advantages of the Anki algorithm, for example, that provides you with the best flashcards at the best time. So you can't really do with making manual flashcards and you don't have a system when you get which card. This is just really inconvenient. 
not to offend anyone that does their flashcards manually, I just believe that it's not really efficient. Just find it out for yourself. Look at whatever topic you might want to check out, if it's on Anki, Quizlet or whatever, and then download a deck and try it out. But don't make this whole deck by yourself. This is just too time consuming and you could use this time in order to study properly. I believe we all encounter this problem every time it comes in this phase before the exam. We talk with our colleagues and friends about the topics and then they lead us to believe that we are just way less prepared than they are and that we put this mental load of stress on us, that we're just not really prepared for an exam yet. And truthfully, this just doesn't help anyone. This is an issue I still have sometimes, but then I simply remember that everyone has a different study technique, has a different pace, maybe I started at a different chapter than someone else and there are just many variables that you don't really know of yet and that's why you should compare yourself to others because you don't know what's going on in the background very often that then after an exam actually took place and we get the results back that I scored better than the friends that initially gave me this bad feeling of unpreparedness and now I score better than them so just relax and do your own thing.